Hey, let's talk about solar energy. You know, when you when you think of environmental science, one of the, the, the iconic images is either going to be a windmill, like a wind turbine, or a solar panel. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a pretty solid argument that this is definitely uh, one of the forms of energy that we're going to be taking more and more advantage of in the future. It's basically you can't be more renewable than solar energy. So let's explore it. Okay. So uh, the thing about solar energy is when we talk about solar energy, we're talking about uh, a direct capture of energy from the sun and converting it in either to heat or electricity, right? Uh, you, you can make the argument that almost every form of energy on Earth other than nuclear and geothermal is solar in nature, you know, whether it be wind or, or, or hydro or fossil fuel. But when we say solar, we're, 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 we're specifically referring to that direct conversion to electricity, light to electricity or light to heat. So not to be too complicated here, but uh, just so you know, there's four different ways uh, that solar energy is used and, and you need to know each of these four. So you can have passive solar and passive solar just means the way we construct our homes and landscaping designs are uh, intentionally uh, adapted to, to bring in heat energy from the sun in the, in the wintertime and to keep it out during the summertime in order to uh, reduce the amount of energy I need to heat and cool my home. Active systems are, are kind of similar that we're, we're basically using sunlight, you know, to make heat. But what we're doing is we're, 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 we're absorbing it into a liquid and we're, we're circling that liquid with a pump. That's why it's active, where we're actively pumping the heat through our house uh, uh, using a, a, a liquid pump. Then we can have photovoltaics, which is what you're thinking of usually when you think of solar energy. It's, it's basically solar cells, right? Uh, these uh, these photovoltaic cells that are just gonna take incoming light energy and turn it directly into electrical energy. And then we have what was called solar thermal power. So solar thermal power is I'm taking sunlight energy and I'm focusing it using usually mirrors. Uh, and then I am uh, getting a high enough temperature from this that I'm able to boil water, generate steam, and use that steam to turn a turbine and make electricity the way we're used to. You know, you turn a turbine, it turns a generator, and out comes electricity. So those are the four ways that solar energy is used. Let's take a look at each of them. So passive solar uh, is just basically designing homes and buildings in ways that maximize uh, the the capture of light energy into heat energy in the wintertime and minimize it during the summertime. So let's just look at how you do this. You want your windows to primarily be only on the side of the building that faces the equator because that's where the sun is going to be in the sky, right? So in the northern hemisphere, we want to have our windows facing south. In the southern hemisphere, we want them facing north. We want to minimize the amount of windows on the other sides of buildings because windows are a place where... Uh, uh, heat energy comes in in the summer and heat energy goes out in the wintertime. So it's it's like where energy leaks in and out of our house. What we often do is we, we can use landscaping plantings of deciduous trees because in the, in the summertime they'll have leaves which will provide shade that keeps light out of our house when we don't want our house to get hot. But in the wintertime the leaves fall off and they let the sunlight in. So that's how you can employ landscaping into passive solar. We can also build the overhangs of our roofs in such a way to take advantage of the different angle in the sky. So remember, in the wintertime, the sun is low in the sky. Uh, and so we, we have these eaves that hang out away. So in the, in the summertime, when the sun is high in the sky, they block the light from coming into our house. But in the wintertime, when the sun is low, they don't block and they let it in. Uh, we, we can uh, try to have the interior of our house a non-white color to try to reduce the amount of light that reflects back out and get it kept inside there. We can employ a thermal mass. It could be like uh, water piping in the floor. It could be some sort of a uh, rock uh, or ceramic, something that's going to absorb that, that energy as it comes in so that the house doesn't get too hot during the day. Uh, but then at night, it re-radiates re it back into the house. So it sort of uh, uh, spreads that energy out over a longer time. Uh, and also having uh, appropriate insulation so that we, we tend to hold the heat in when we want it, or we also have ventilation so we can let the heat out in the summer when we don't want it. And by doing all these things, we can greatly reduce our, the amount of energy we need to, to heat and cool home. I have a friend in Seattle who, who has a house that has these kind of passive solars, and, and she hardly spends any money at all on heating or air conditioning. Uh, so if everybody did this, the amount of energy that the world could save would be tremendous. It's just a, a mindset of, of what a house is supposed to look like. 
Another uh, new component, this is kind of exciting, is a lot of office buildings uh, aren't really able to take advantage of a lot of those of those those passive solar designs. They can do some, right? Uh, but one thing they have now is what's called smart glass. So, uh, and you can see this at Lotte World Building if you've ever Lotte Tower. Uh, they have it on the floor where they can change the opacity of the floor. So, so basically, you can these these are there's a type of glass where you can by putting a, a voltage across it, you can change how much light it lets through. So you can see like you know under one set of circumstances, I let light in so the building gets warm. But if I don't want that to happen, I can change the opacity of it and provide shade inside the inside that house or the building. So uh, that's another way I can basically, it's still considered to be passive because it's just how much light is coming into or not coming into the house. Now, an act of solar, remember, it involves moving a fluid. Now, that fluid could be water or, or glycerol or something else, or oil. Okay. But basically what happens, we have solar collectors on the roof, which are going to be this, these, these black tubes. So black, so it maximizes the, the ability to absorb energy from the sun. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been on a roof of a building in the summertime. I've had to work on roofs. It is so hot. And usually that's just wasted heat energy. Why waste it? So the idea is we're going to put these panels up here. The sunlight is going to make the liquid in here really hot. And then we're going to have a pump that we're going to actively, and it's the term active, pump this liquid through here so that uh, so that it, it goes in cool and comes out very hot. And then we have a heat exchanger uh, inside our, our, our garage, let's say, and we'll pump uh cool water into there and it will get heated up and now hot water comes out of it. So basically the water we're using to take showers with and wash our clothes with and wash our dishes with, we want it to be warm, but we're letting it be warmed by the sun instead of by, you know, burning natural gas or using electricity. Now solar thermal plant plants are, they're cool, but they're really not that cool. <laughs> like, I, I, okay. So I don't think this is the future of solar energy, but they've tried it a bit and, 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 and they are interesting. So let's just talk about it. So, so the idea is you're basically making a giant solar collector, usually in a desert area where you're going to have lots of sun exposure. And so basically you have this huge area of land that has mirrors that are then going to focus. You can even see the light here, right? You focus this light into a tower. This tower is is white because of all the light it's absorbing. And the idea is we're gonna pump water up here. All this, it's, it's thousands of degrees here because of all the light energy we've captured, all the light energy from many, many acres of land and focus in a small area. The water's gonna boil, and then we can use that boiling water to, to, to generate steam and turn a turbine. And you know they've they've got some of these built around the world, you know, in desert areas, and they they have like you know power outputs up to 150 megawatts, which is significant. Um, but you know there, there's a lot of uh, drawbacks, like you know like uh, uh, it's it's you, you've got to have a place where it's very sunny all the time. Uh, it's very difficult to keep the dust off of these things, so that that reduces its effectiveness and so on. But I mean, look at them; they they're impressive to see. Basically, you're taking all the light energy that hits this big area and you're putting this one small area, kind of like a, like, like a magnifying glass where you start a fire or burn a bug. Speaking of which, the few of these that have been built, one problem they've noticed is when birds fly in here, they don't know what they're getting into until it's too late. And they, they, they end up like literally frying birds in midair at a rate of like one bird every couple minutes. So from an environmental standpoint, that's not really great. Uh, uh, it's true that you know, we need we need energy that's non-carbon based, and this is one way of getting it, but maybe it's not the best way of doing it. The poor birds, they always seem to have a problem whether it's solar or wind, huh? Okay, now, uh, really what's, what's more common now and is going to become, I think, the way moving forward to use solar energy uh, to make electricity is these parabolic mirror systems. So instead of having these giant things focusing it all up onto this one tower like that, instead what you have is these, you have these long, troughs of parabolic mirrors that that the light energy comes in the thing about a parabolic mirror is it, it, it hits a focus right and so all the light energy hitting these panels is going to be focused on the one area and we're going to have a pipe go through that area with liquid flowing through it so i'm pumping liquid through this uh and it's, it's kind of similar to that active solar that i'm pumping liquid through and that liquid gets really hot and i'm basically using that hot liquid then uh, it's, you could pump water directly through it, but usually they're going to pump something like oil or some other kind, even like liquid salt through it. And, and basically this, this hot working fluid is going to uh, create uh, steam, and then that steam is then going to uh, turn a turbine. Uh, so in, in a sense, it's, it's basically this part of it is similar to any other power generation system. The only difference is I'm, I'm having these flat uh, 
trough shaped panels heating the water as it passed through here. Let's take a look at one of them. Oh, we don't have a, a sorry, I didn't give you a, a view from above of one of these. I, that's my bad. Okay, I'll put it in the actual uh, presentation that you can look at later. Then there's photovoltaic cells. Okay, so when people think of solar energy, this is usually what they're thinking of. So a photovoltaic cell, uh, you know, it just it takes advantage of uh, a, a certain aspect of of quantum physics where where a photon of light, which is just energy from the sun, it hits this uh, one metal and it causes an electron to be to to move. It, it, it basically the electrons move off this surface, go through a circuit, and come back on the other side. So there's two different metals, and there is this. Um, pathway established where, 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 where photons of light dislodge electrons and force them through a circuit. So it's a direct conversion of light energy into electrical energy with no, no steam generator needed, which is, which is good, you would think, but there's, there's a little bit of difficulties here. Now, I will say this. I was very pessimistic about this for many years because the efficiencies were so low when I first started paying attention to this 20, 30 years ago. Uh, but over the time, so, so you know, so like I, this one, I was paying attention back in the 80s, right? When the efficiencies were under 5%, that didn't seem great. But the efficiencies have snuck up. In fact, there's there's some kinds that have gotten up to almost 30%, even more efficiencies than that. These ones that are called concentrators, which basically the 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 solar cell has built into it these mirror systems. But so so that's pretty good efficiency. So so if you can catch 30% of the sunlight hitting an area and turn it electricity, you're doing pretty good. And so these systems are are you know are continuing to to gain in efficiency, uh, and uh, uh, they are now being deployed as a way of producing municipal power. Uh, and here's the advantage. Okay, so photovoltaic cells, uh, it's renewable energy. You're never going to run out of sunlight. That's true for all forms of solar, right? No CO2 out, but that's true for all sort uh, uh, forms of solar. But the nice thing about photovoltaics is. Uh, you can use it in places where you don't have an electrical grid, all right? So, like, you it's, it's, you can deploy this to areas of, of you know, sub-Saharan Africa or, you know, different parts of Central Asia that don't really have much in the way of, of electricity. So that's one advantage you have. There are a number of disadvantages, and we need to be honest about them. One is a very high initial cost. These systems are not cheap, uh, uh, although I know people put them on their own houses, but they're, they're not cheap. The energy output obviously varies throughout the day. If it's a cloudy day, you're not going to get much electricity. If it, you know in the wintertime, you don't get as much as you do in the summer. You don't get any at night. Uh, and and um, this 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 middle one is, is it turns out this isn't so much true anymore. Like it, it is it's no longer true that you can't store up and use it when you get home. Their their battery technology is advanced now. Where actually this is something you can do now. It used to be you couldn't, but just in recent years, I would say really thanks to Elon Musk and his advances with the, the Tesla designs that the lithium ion batteries have advanced to the point where actually you can start to store it at your house. But even if you can't, that doesn't really matter so much. Uh, but one problem we have is this. Over time, they do become less and less uh, effective. Their, their efficiencies go down. And you know, the, the right now, they last about 30 years. Hopefully, that will change over time. But, but here's the problem. When you take them down, it turns out there's they, they do contain a bit of heavy metals, mostly lead and cadmium, and they, they, they can't just be disposed of in an ordinary way. So so there's definitely a little bit of environmental concern here, but I think in the overall scheme of things, having clean, re renewable, non-carbon-based energy is probably outweighs the, the um, disposal and heavy metals issues. So these photovoltaic or PV systems, they can be set up as municipal uh, systems where you have these very large, usually the, the, the concentrator cells, they're usually operated with uh, computer controlled servos. So they, they always position themselves to be perpendicular to the sun's rays. And by doing this, you can get quite a bit of electricity generated this way. So there are some very large solar stations out there. Uh, and you see them certainly driving around Korea, right? Uh, but but one thing that's exciting that's happening in America to a large extent is that even in places that aren't all that sunny, like say Seattle, is that people are having their their homes installed with them on the roofs, uh, and and the idea is that that uh, over the course of the day you 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 grab energy from the sun. Now now that there's batteries, you can send it here and put it in a battery unit and store it in your home because let's face it, most people are gone during the day when the sun is shining. 
Uh, and so, but you come home and then you want the lights on at night and you want to watch TV and you want to wash your clothes, whatever. So, so the idea is you can now store it up in your home. But even if you don't do that, what happens now is because of smart grid technology, we can actually have a smart meter, which will, will sell the electricity to the power company. So the power company doesn't have to generate as much electricity at the coal plant or the nuclear plant when there's people with solar panels selling them electricity from their homes. In fact, uh, th th it's really kind of cool now because I, the, the same woman who has that passive system also has this on her roof. And she said, well, what happens is uh, you, you have apps that will set a price point. And when, as the, during different times of the day, the power company charges different amounts for electricity. So you can basically optimize it to sell them electricity when it's advantageous to you and not and, and, and keep it for yourself when it's, it's, it's less advantageous. Another thing is the, the batteries that you can use, your car can be that battery. So if you're if you leave your electric vehicle at home, you can just use that to store up energy in your car. So your car can be where you're storing that electricity. But then again, that means you're not driving your electric car. So so uh, maybe you're taking public transportation. So it's okay. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is that uh, uh, under ideal conditions, uh, these systems can generate a, about you know for a typical like you know American sized family home, which is fairly large compared to Asian standards. Uh, you know, we're talking maybe like like 3,000 kilowatt hours of, of energy that can be captured this way. And if you consider that a typical household uses about 9,000 years, so we're talking a third of your energy needs can, can come this way. So apart from the initial expenses, uh, deploying this could, could, could significantly, uh, like one third of home usage could be taken care of this way, which is, which is really, uh, really a, a very cool thing.